right, welcome back. We still proceed with this morning conversation right here on Good Morning Kenya. And as Regina has mentioned, climate change is a very important conversation that we need to have today in the country. My name is Ram Aguko. If you don't, if you've just joined us, and this is Good Morning Kenya. Thank you so much for sticking with KBC Channel One, your national broadcaster. And of course, it's a pleasure having you uh, on this fine Monday morning. And uh, to help us in this conversation about climate change that we're about to have um in studio joined by professor patrick vekoyan he is a ceo of the global center on adaptation karibu sana welcome to the show thank you so much rama for having me uh, this thanks, morning thanks for coming coming i heard that you were in uh, machakos i was in machakos uh, on on sunday uh, upon my arrival and i have to say it was uh, quite an extraordinary um, uh, situation why uh, how, how was it there well uh, i was met by a uh, small hall of farmers obviously uh, predominantly um, women and i said mm. climate change obviously is quite an abstract phenomenon mm. what in fact is your life what do you need what are the key challenges <laughs> and ram they had three messages mm -hmm. they said we need water water Water. water that's exactly what they were, were um, um, talking about mm -hmm. and they said well the reality is this we're just recovering from the COVID crisis mm -hmm. we see the impact of the ukraine crisis on food prices here in kenya and on and top globally, of that globally globally and on mm -hmm. top of that there is the climate crisis and ram it is an extraordinary situation there is a profound moral injustice in the system mm -hmm. why mm -hmm. Africa as a whole contributed how much to the climate crisis? Less than 3%. Mm -hmm. Nine out of the ten most vulnerable nations to climate change are where? In Africa. Kenya being one. I, I love what you said because Africa as a continent, we need around 3.5 trillion Kenya shillings. Precisely. And so far we've only managed to mobilize 620 billion shillings. Yeah, so that is exactly the point. Mm -hmm. As you know, Ram, there are these global gatherings every mm -hmm. year. Heads of state and government from mm -hmm. the West and rest of the world are coming together at these so-called climate summits mm. they make promises they make commitments they promise to double triple quadruple financial support mm. to the continent mm -hmm. but it was very telling president ruto for his first visit to the climate summit mm -hmm. last november mm -hmm. had a very strong statement he said we cannot eat and feed our people with empty promises Exactly. financing mm -hmm. has to flow mm -hmm. and he also said well in fact we have the plan for that we know what's needed you have promised you're the part of the problem hence your financial support is absolutely vital but professor patrick you've managed to establish global initiatives right. and i love the work you do, that you've done so far and these initiatives are there to support uh, 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 african countries and many other countries even beyond africa uh, uh, to address the impacts of uh, climate change let's do a stock change right. uh, a stock tech on uh, where we are today and first of all uh, um, i want to start with uh, the steps we've taken so far the steps we need to take secondly and thirdly the challenges we've yeah. met so far so the steps you've taken so far yeah. in addressing these yeah. challenges do you feel like we've made the right steps yeah. to this stage first of yes. first things first if you talk to the people mm -hmm. in say uh, makweni the yeah. answer will be no because they want to see global commitments being translated mm. into concrete action on the ground let's do the scorecard let's okay. let's give ourselves a, a critical report yes the world has promised to reduce greenhouse gas emissions mm. to a level where the world would not warm up to 1.5 degrees celsius where are we heading today mm -hmm. to a three degrees world well what does that mean surely what mm. does it mean for africa it mm. means for africa that 30 percent of all land being under production for maize will be lost what does it mean 60 percent of all area for beans production mm -hmm. will be lost in africa so on the 1.5 degree commitment quite frankly scorecard is mm -hmm. failure what failure. about what about the financing wow Mm -hmm. the world has promised 100 billion dollars from the global north to the south each and every year how much is flowing today mm -hmm. 80 billion dollar a year so that's 20 billion dollars short 
Hence, that's failure. Mm. What has been done? Yes, steps have been done in the field. Mm -hmm. Say in um, Marquina, which I visited last time when I was here, they said, yes, it's the same challenge. Water, water, water. But there are concrete solutions which we can take here on the ground. Mm -hmm. Let me give you a couple of examples. Okay. Water harvesting, drip irrigation, mm. different crops which are drought tolerant. Mm -hmm. These examples, they exist. But what it now is required, they need to go to scale and they need mm -hmm. to be implemented at speed. And that is why, uh, Ram, mm -hmm. African leaders came together. Mm -hmm. They see the writing on the wall that the global north, the west, is not delivering fast enough. And they basically turned the table and said, you know what? We're going to make our own plan. They launched under President Ruto's mm -hmm. leadership mm -hmm. the so-called Triple AP. Yeah. Another acronym. Mm -hmm. What does it mean? Mm -hmm. Africa Adaptation Acceleration Program. Mm -hmm. $25 billion over five years for food security, for infrastructure, for youth and jobs. Mm -hmm. That money now needs to be mobilized. And mm -hmm. what the African continent has done is said, okay, $25 billion is needed. We put half of it on the table. $12.5 billion is coming from taxpayers like yourself, Ram, mm -hmm. being mm -hmm. invested in, mm -hmm. this, uh, in this agenda. But quite frankly, the other part of that equation mm -hmm. needs to be um, mobilized by the international community. They've promised it over and over again. Now is the time for delivery. It means that the, the steps we've taken so far aren't as significant uh, to the point that we can say that there is some big change especially in Africa as a continent. So, so that's one way to frame it. I mm -hmm. would like to see, um, to frame it in a way of the opportunities. Okay, think, uh -huh. I love that. Mm -hmm. Think about numbers, mm -hmm. think about economics. Okay. Take agriculture. Mm -hmm. How much is currently being imported into Africa each and every year? Mm -hmm. 75 billion dollars of food Africans are paying for imported food. Mm -hmm. that, isn't that quite um, unusual where 60% of all arable land, which is uncultivated today, mm -hmm. happens to be in Africa? Enough. Wouldn't it be mm -hmm. much better if Africa would say, we want to become food sovereign. Mm -hmm. We're going to produce our own food. We can produce our own food. And we have to produce our own food. Mm -hmm. And even if we produce it well, we can export and make money out of this. There needs to be sort of a completely transformation in the agriculture sector. Mm -hmm. Because the numbers are very clear. Yeah. If we go on the current trajectory of not integrated so-called climate adaptation, drip irrigation, um, drought tolerant crops, these types of intervention. You know what the annual cost is of what we lose, uh, Ram, on an annual basis? 200 billion here in Africa. What if we change the table and we say, you know what, we're going to invest, we're going to do the right things, we're mm -hmm. going to do the smart thing. Mm -hmm. What are those costs? 15 billion dollars, one five billion dollars. Mm -hmm. In other words, inaction is expensive, not investing in climate adaptation. Mm. And the good part is, Ram, mm. this is not only the agenda of today or tomorrow, it's the agenda of the future. Why? Mm -hmm. Because investing in climate adaptation, tree planting, I mean, that's one of the big initiatives of President uh, Ruto. Mm -hmm. Those types of initiatives mm -hmm. are job creators. Mm -hmm. Africa has the youngest uh, population um, in the world. Mm -hmm. We need not only jobs, we need well-paid jobs. I love the fact that you're mentioning one word, investments. Mm. And one particular uh, move that the Kenyan government has made is to um, have a deal, a pact with the United Kingdom, agreeing to fast track a total of six projects mm -hmm. so far. And uh, these are projects worth 500 billion mm -hmm. Kenya shillings to support Kenya's leadership on climate change. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like the investments that we've made so far, do we need to add more investments or are these investments enough to take us through to 2030? Yeah. Can they sustain yeah. us? Well, the, the, the fact of the matter is, mm. it's obviously fantastic. There is this deal between yeah. mm -hmm. Kenya mm -hmm. and the United Kingdom and mm -hmm. that money is flowing. 
it's absolutely vital. As President Ruto says yes. over and over again, these deals need to become very concrete. He said, I want to see which roads are now going to be climate resilient, yeah. which hospitals are being climate resilient, which schools are going to become climate resilient. Mm -hmm. And he also said, I'm going to put my own money, the government's money, behind this. Yeah. But I mean, if the Global North is also putting their uh, commitment and their responsibility translated into money on the table, mm -hmm. even better. So the You're UK, saying if. You said if. Well, the UK commitment is a good step. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is, all African nations, including Kenya, has done their math. They're, of course, they have mm -hmm. done their homework. Yeah. How much do they need on an annual basis to make their economies climate adaptive, i.e. resilient to the shocks, to the droughts, to the storms, to the <laughs> floods? How much is that figure? Mm. 51 billion US dollars a year. How much is flowing today? 11 billion dollars. So there's a shortfall of 40 billion. Exactly. And that shortfall mm -hmm. is actually very unfortunate because this climate agenda is very often framed in something esoteric and it is uh, environment and mm -hmm. tree hugging and what have you. It's not. Okay. It's an economic agenda. Mm -hmm. It's a growth agenda. It's a jobs agenda. It's a prosperity agenda. Then how can we ensure that we fight climate change and at the same time ensure that there is economic growth yeah so first and foremost what kenya needs to do and is now doing is to do what it does best mm -hmm. is to harness the power of nature wow what do i mean by that yes planting trees mm -hmm. president ruto's and i mean the very dynamic environment cabinet mm -hmm. secretary which you have in here in kenya mm -hmm. they have launched this 15 billion tree planting tree initiative mm. and you may think well planting tree here in in kenya is that even needed yes it is needed mm -hmm. because planting trees stores the water planting trees make sure that the land is more productive planting trees even sucks the carbon out of the air which you can sell on the international market so these types of initiatives yeah harnessing the power of nature mm -hmm. that's exactly the way forward so i quite frankly the way i see it from Europe, Kenya is this beacon of hope of this trajectory where it thinks climate change, it is an emergency. I've seen those people living on the front line mm. of the climate emergency in, in Makweni and other counties and Machakos. Yeah. Yeah. But it is also, it's a growth agenda. And I think that is the direction of travel the world needs to take and the world is looking at Kenya by saying what are the steps are being taken here? Because as you said, and as the leader uh, said, it's the worst drought mm. in 40 years. Yeah. The droughts, there is a direct correlation with climate change. This drought, these impacts, it's not caused by Kenyans, mm -hmm. but they're suffering the brunt of the impacts. That profound injustice needs to be addressed, and it needs to be addressed now immediately indeed immediately i love what you're saying and if we look into these matters now we we will have a future for our people many are dying because of these issues of climate change and i'm looking at the challenges that we face so far you've mentioned uh, quite a, a lot of these challenges what are some of those possible opportunities precisely that we have yes that so we can get from these challenges that we are getting so, um, back to Machacos. Back to Machacos. It's exactly the question I asked. I said, it's one thing to talk, talk about challenges, and they're very dire, which mm. I uh, totally acknowledge. Yes. I said, what are the solutions which you need? Mm -hmm. So there was this lady farmer, and mm. she said, well, actually, she picked something out of her bag. She said, I have something, which is a solution. And I said, what is it? She said, it's a phone. She came to you. No, I was sitting with her. She said, it's oh. a phone. I said, what's with that phone? He said, well, given that the weather now is so unpredictable, mm. she said, well, we're here in Kenya, we used to have the long range, we have the short range, but we don't even know when the rains are coming. But I have this device, this mm. mobile phone. Okay. I receive now information on my mobile phone, which says the rains are coming at this time, I need to um, plant at that time, I need to use those seeds. By the way, she said, on my phone, I can see what the market price is, where to sell my produce. 
it's this sort of 21st century technology mm. innovation which will help the farmers will a phone bring the rain obviously not no but it should be part of the toolkit why because using digital solutions in agriculture, what will it do to yield to a ram? It will increase it from 40 to 70 percent. Digital solutions. Digital solutions is part of the toolkit yeah. of solutions. What better way mm. to basically pilot and scale this up here in Kenya? Basically, the founding mother of M-Pesa, of digital payment. I mean, the next Bill Gates in yeah. agriculture mm -hmm. should be Kenyan. Don't you think, Ram? I believe so. I believe we have yeah. that opportunity, that potential, and we have the people, we have the manpower, we have the knowledge, we have uh, the, the facilities to, do, to, to, to get to that level. You know, um, even as we talk about this, let's look at the policies mm -hmm. right there. And of course, I am uh, taken back to the Paris Agreement. Yes. Um, I, I, I remember, and, and, and I'm wondering, do we have the right policies so far they are there are they working and what do we need yeah. to do to tweak it a bit to make it better yeah so it's a, it's a very good question ram and as i said mm -hmm. uh, in, in my chakos the message was water 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 mm. but the sub message was finance 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 <laughs> yeah the paris agreement mm -hmm. again it promised that the world would mobilize hundred billion dollars mm. and I said earlier in our conversation how much is flowing mm -hmm. 80 billion US dollars a year but where is that money if you go to the fields say in the northern part of, of Kenya and you talk to a smallholder farmer or you talk to a pastoralist they would say actually all these agreements in these fancy capitals with all these billions of dollars being mobilized I don't see it here on my farm I don't see it here when I'm doing a sort of the pastoralism mm -hmm because the problem is this there is this so-called green climate fund which is the largest climate fund in the world is housed in seoul in korea mm -hmm. it's over 10 billion dollars is is, is 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 already there mm -hmm. but a, f a fraction a tiny fraction of that is coming to africa why because the policies the rules of the games are too complicated it's for african nations extremely difficult to access these resources why the rules of the game you need to come with a proposal you mm -hmm. need to develop um, the you need to be accredited mm -hmm. these rules are so complicated to access financing which is there so my organization the, the organization which i lead as you said the global center on adaptation yeah part of our work mm -hmm. is to support african nations to access resources which already are is there in the system including from the green climate fund okay okay mm -hmm. So I think water, water, water translates into finance, 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 which at the end of the day needs to translate into action, action, action on the ground. I think that is sort of the, the, the exam question which we're all uh, being tested mm -hmm. uh, against. I see. And, and I wonder if we, we, if we will pass that exam. <laughs> or if, if we'll get an average mark, will we get an no, A? My um, conviction mm -hmm. is, is this. Am I uh, um, an optimist? or am I a pessimist? Mm -hmm. I'm neither of those. I'm determined. Okay. Why? Because there is only one path towards prosperity. When I was in uh, Makweni Ram last time around, mm. and I was welcomed in a very uh, sort of uh, warm way, <laughs> uh, typical, I would think, of, mm. of Kenyans, yeah. by these female farmers, and they say and they sang a song and I would not do it on the show try to uh, <laughs> replicate uh, I can only that. imagine <laughs> but the essence of that song was yeah. when you climb a mountain you find good things on top of it mm. translate that to our conversation today when you climb a mountain you find good things on top of it what is that good thing that good thing is investing in climate adaptation we know what the solutions are, we know what works, we know what doesn't work. That's exactly what we need to do because my strong conviction is this. Mm. Investing in adaptation is unstoppable. Mm -hmm. And with that, Kenya is unstoppable. We have the COP28 climate change conference. Correct. Look, I'm looking at that, it's coming up later this year in Abu Dhabi. 
between COP27 and COP28, do you feel like we will be ready for that particular conversation in Abu Dhabi? So the thing is this, there is COP27, there is COP28, and I'm sure there will be COP29 and COP30. Yes. Uh, what does it do for the people of Kenya? Mm. What do these summits really translate exactly, into? Exactly. It is important mm. and it is not important, these COPs, these summits. It's important because it brings leaders together. And quite frankly, it exposes leaders from the Western world upon all their sort of promise of which they've, they've made. Mm. What I think is extremely important is that what President Ruto has done out of COP27, the last one in, in, in Egypt, he said, next year, the next summit, I cannot feed my people mm -hmm. out of these summits. I cannot feed uh, the people in my and my own Majakos because of leaders are coming. Mm -hmm. I need concrete results. And he said, I'm going to take the matters into my own hands. He will host an own summit, a climate summit here in Africa with obviously African leaders, but also leaders of the rest of the world mm -hmm. here in Nairobi where he will bring the conversation to Nairobi where leaders are being exposed to the reality on the ground because Ram mm. the last cop had this so-called historic breakthrough another historic breakthrough what was it there was a commitment by the world i.e. by the leaders who mm -hmm. said we will now have a new fund what is it called mm -hmm. a loss and damage fund yeah. what does it mean it means that Let's say the situation in Pakistan with the floods a couple of months ago, a third of the country was underwater. It needs to be rebuilt. Someone needs to pay that, uh, uh, that price ticket. It should be funded out of the loss and damage fund. Mm -hmm. But the reality here is, again, uh, Ram, yeah. a loss and damage fund was announced in, uh, at the last COP. How much money is in that fund today? The short answer is zero <laughs> so it's great to have another fund uh, being let's say announced during one of these summits it's much better just to confirm much productive to to deliver the promises which have been made before you've checked that there's zero uh, it, 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 zero no it, let me be more precise zero point zero that's how much is in that <laughs> loss and damage fund today <laughs> but there are these commitments on adaptation that's wow. very important Ram. Mm. Two years ago, in Glasgow, the world promised for Africa on the most significant climate agenda to double adaptation finance, making roads more resilient, making agriculture more resilient to shocks such as drought. That money has to be delivered, and that is why it is so important that President Ruto is basically taking control of this agenda and it's not only convening summits, but it's basically in every conversation which he has mm. with world leaders, he said, okay, we can make all sorts of deals, such as what she's making with the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. Money has to flow. I think that's the sort of the bottom line, what is at stake uh, here um, in Kenya. Do you feel like all these conversations we're having, even the one we're having today, are people receptive? Are people working? Yes. After all is said and done, something needs to be done. Something needs to be handled. After all these things, that, all these meetings, all these conferences, all these talks we are having, are people receptive and is action being taken? Well, well yes and no. So the climate debate mm -hmm. is obviously not um, held in splendid isolation. The climate debate is also in the context of, say, the war in Ukraine. I mean, when that commitment was made two years ago in Glasgow to mm. double adaptation yeah, finance yeah. to Africa, mm. a month later, uh, Russia invaded uh, Ukraine. Ukraine. And let's say Western nation, what do they do with their development budget, money was supposed to come mm. to Africa, mm. they repurpose this to, um, to, f to, f to, finance. to finance the reconstruction mm -hmm. and the rebuild up mm -hmm. in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. So there is this sort of fiscal challenge, um, not just in Africa, mm -hmm. but in the rest of the world. There is this looming economic recession, mm -hmm. not just in, in Africa, but in the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. So there is this sort of very dire situation uh, globally, where the cost of living globally is, is, is going up, but still, 
this is the climate agenda it's very important if there's one message to which i would like to convey mm -hmm. is the climate agenda is an investment agenda it's a jobs agenda it's a growth agenda very recently i was in the other part of africa um, in senegal uh, with mm -hmm. president Macky Sall, mm -hmm. and he said well yes i understand in kenya uh, in the horn of africa there is this massive drought I actually, I have the, the flip side of the problem. Okay. We have massive floods each and every year, mm. floods in the capital of Dhaka. If only those are balance. What is the economic cost of those floods for a country like Senegal? 10% mm -hmm. of GDP is being lost every single year. So can you imagine that 10% of loss, if you were to invest in sort of water storage, water uh, protection in, in Senegal and on the other side, indeed, on the drought in, um, here in, in, in Kenya. Mm. It, you, the loss of GDP will turn into a gain in GDP. That's, the thing is this, people in uh, Machakos, people in Makweni, they understand what climate change is because they're living this they're li on a mm. daily basis. <laughs> we don't need to explain wh what climate change means. Exactly. They're mm -hmm. the climate sort of leaders on the, on the forefront. Mm -hmm. Who else knows and understands climate change extremely well? Ministers of Finance. Because they see on their balance uh, uh, sheets mm. what the climate change is wrecking and how it is wrecking their economy. Mm. So I think the fiscal space is very tight. But changing this into a, an opportunity of investment, that's the way to go. Mm. Because, Ram, mm. in a short, simplified version, Africa has a choice to make. It is adapt or die. That's the stark reality. Wow. Adapt or die. Yeah. Very strong. Very strong indeed. I love what you're saying. I want us to bring this conversation to a close. And uh, I want to give you time to still have a final word in regards to this. I asked I, I ask my final question. And this is in regards to how we can, uh, uh, you know, you know um, bring into a change as a country in Kenya when it comes to matters concerning climate change. You mentioned it. Drought is still uh, something that we are fighting against as a country. Still a very key issue and I'm sure that even our ministers talk about it every single time. As we bring this to a close, what are some of the recommendations you can give to the Kenyan government? Well, the, f the principal sort of um, strength of this nation is the people the people of Kenya. Mm. They are living through this climate emergency today. It's either in the Makwenis or the Machakos of this world, or even in a, in a sort of, in, in Mukuru, in an informal settlement mm. with the heat stress and, 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 the, and the floods when they, when they do come. Yeah. These people are living on the front lines of the climate emergency, but they're also the ones who are most resilient to this shock. They know what is needed. So once this global finance is coming in, and it is coming in, not sooner, but it is coming in, yeah. it's vital that the plans of a nation speak to the needs of the people. Mm -hmm. I think the, the, the system which is here in Kenya is quite frankly quite unique with this devolved power to the counties. So I think this dynamic between the counties and the central government where the people are in the central place of not only identifying the problems, but particularly saying what the solutions are. Mm. And again, the message is very clear. Mm. Water, water, water. Water. Mm -hmm. water, water, water. Wow, I love this conversation. Uh, Professor Patrick, thank you so much for finding time to join me today. I believe that uh, the future is still bright indeed regardless of the challenges and you mentioned it it isn't about the challenges it's about the opportunities that we can get from all these things thank you all very much indeed thanks so much for coming and of course that was professor uh, patrick vekoyan who is uh, the ceo of uh, the global center on adaptation we've been having a conversation on climate ch ch change and i'm looking forward to having more of these discussions from here i, 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 I um, i'm told you still have yet another conference at uh,
Wangari Maathai. Indeed. Yeah. So at the Wangari Maathai, Wangari Maathai obviously is an iconic figure, not just in Kenya but but globally. Uh. At the Wangari Maathai Institute, which I'm honored to to become to to be uh, the distinguished chair uh, of. Okay. We're okay. hosting today uh. not a conversation. We're hosting today an action agenda on food security, uh. on the digital solutions. Mm -hmm. What is needed? What can be brought to the table today? I know our team will be on the ground together with you uh, in regards to that particular discussion there. And I wish you the best. Keep doing what you're doing, Prof. Thank you very much indeed. And of course, that brings us to the end of this conversation right here on Good Morning Kenya. It has been a pleasure being with you. My name is Ram Maguko. We are taking a short break, but we'll be back with more right here on KBC Channel 1. Keep it Good Morning Kenya.